Hello, in this video, we're going to look at character creation part four, which is connecting your character creation screen to a custom server. So the one that I'm uh, connecting to is available on GitHub. So this server is currently in development. It's not really ready for production, but it serves pretty well for educational purposes. So do check that out if you like. And if you're connecting to a different server, then obviously you'll have to check some of the specification for it. So the steps might be quite similar, but obviously the payloads and stuff will be different. Like I'm 99.9% .9 sure it will be different. Okay, so um, all of the steps in order to achieve it are available on this blog post. So do check that out if you wish to follow along. Um, I'm going to give a brief demonstration of what it is that we're making uh, as usual. So basically, uh, it's back to the screen. So uh, we'll be able to basically customize your character. So let's just make something quite different. Um, add a beard, uh, give it some name. So basically, uh, the, the piece that we're looking at doing now is on this create button. So when I click create, it will send a request to the server to create that character and uh, it will keep it synchronized. So there's me clicking create. So now this is my character that I've just created. And then there's other ones that I've uh, created previously, for instance, right? So um, this specific screen for selecting characters, we're going to be looking at that next um, in the next video. Um, and in this one, again, it's, it, it's this create button that we're going to be looking at in, in this video. Okay, so um, yeah, let's uh, get started. So the first thing that probably worth doing is creating a widget for select character, even though we're not going to be um, actively working on this widget today. Um, we are going to be basically toggling back to it when uh, we've created the character successfully. So may as well create a skeleton um, blueprint for it now. Uh, keep it fairly simple. I mean, you can copy the design from the previous widget. Um, or, you know, design it as you like. I mean, I would say one of the only requirements is to be able to toggle back to the create character widget. So basically have a button to uh, navigate back to the create character widget. So on clicked, um, we create a, a widget. In my case, it's called customized character. Uh, it could be called create character widget, etc. Add that to viewport and then remove this one from parent. So don't worry about all of the other blueprints. Uh, I'll be looking at those in the next video. So specifically just this part that we need at this stage. So, uh, and then back into this one, I've also got a close button. So uh, it can be anywhere you like. So again, very similar. When you click this button, I will then handle close uh, and create the select character widget. Add that to viewport and remove this from parent. Now, the reason why I have it on a custom event is like I say, when I'm successfully creating my character, I'll close this widget and open up the select character widget. I also added a destructor for this blueprint because I spawn a uh, bl blueprint when I'm on this screen. So this one over here, uh, I spawn this actor and I want to get rid of it when I close that screen. So that's what this event destruct does. Um, one minor modification to uh, the previous work is that on the constructor, I um, also added update character appearance struct. So don't worry about this if you're just like starting on here, but this is just an FYI. Um, this is just to basically make sure that this character appearance struct is always populated, even at the very beginning without making any changes. Um, okay, so now that this prerequisite pieces are ready, we're going to look at the actual request that we need to generate to the server in order to create the character. Okay, so um, the best way to look at this is using Postman. So this is sort of emulating our, um, let's call it Unreal Engine UI work, right? So uh, this is what we need to basically send to the server, right? We need to send it the name, the appearance information, which is a map of keys and values for the appearance, and then the class name that we're uh, starting with. Uh, so the account information is actually stored over here. So first account one, let's just uh, basically have something new to test with. So if I uh, get my account characters now, there's nothing available there. If I then go and create a new um, character, so let's just put some, some test one. So if I go ahead and create it, so there's my response, uh, basically saying it was successful. Uh, if I now get my account characters, uh, there's the um, character that I've just created. And then if I try and call it again, 
uh, it will tell me that the character name already exists. So ideally, you'll also add some extra validation. For example, um, now the um, class name is also incorrect. So if I fix my name, uh, it will now tell me invalid class, right? So um, there's a, a couple of additional validations, but nothing crazy. So now I've created another characters. So uh, now this response will give me both my characters, right? So the uh, get my characters will look into more detail in the next video. And again, specifically the create character is what we're going to be focusing now. So how do we uh, simulate this request using Unreal Engine? Okay, so if I go back to um, yeah, customize character. So specifically when you click create, uh, that's what we're going to be focusing on, right? So that's what I'm going to do here. I've actually added a new um, graph for uh, splitting out this work just because the event graph was starting to be quite noisy. So I called it create character API graph. Um, so uh, that's what we're going to be looking at. So we're going to be utilizing the VA REST subsystem um, module. So basically we're going to be constructing a JSON request. So it's a post request with JSON content type. So we can confirm that with Postman here. So there's my post. So it's not a get, it's not a put, it's a post. Um, and it's JSON content type. So you can see uh, this data is JSON. So you can generally recognize it with these curly brackets. Um, okay, so that's uh, how we know what kind of uh, HTTP request to construct. Uh, we um, convert it to a local variable. We then set the header. So the header is how we control the account name. So you can see me populating it over here. So here uh, I type test account one. Uh, this is static right now. Obviously, when you have an, uh, a login screen, you're going to be uh, using the account uh, provided from there. You know, uh, obviously, after doing some authentication checks. And now the interesting part is this helper method over here to create character requests to JSON, right? So I created some helpers over here. Uh, there they are, VA REST test helpers, uh, VA REST uh, helpers. And uh, these are basically just some static li libraries. So I think it's, uh, yeah, blueprint function library. Uh, and I called it struct to VA REST. So basically I take in some structures and I'm going to create some JSON objects from those structures. So I'm interested in character appearance, the character name and the class. So that's kind of my inputs there. And I'm going to be outputting this um, VA REST JSON object. Okay. So uh, those are the inputs and the outputs. So how do I do it? So first of all, I create a JSON for my appearance info, right? So uh, I'm first populating uh, this pieces over here. Okay, so this is basically a nested object inside this object, right? So anything that begins these curly brackets is a nested object. So I want to make a JSON for anything uh, nested inside. So that's what I'm doing. And the way to populate it is I get my character appearance structure. So this is uh, used by me previously. Uh, if you remember, it has all of these fields, race, gender, hairstyle, etc. I don't actually need the character name. I'm probably going to delete this quite soon. Um, and you can see me go for each one of these and I'm setting them as string fields. So there's my race, there's my gender, uh, hairstyle, etc. So I want to really replicate this thing over here. So you can see there's my keys for race, gender, hairstyle, etc. And those are the values. So I want to be replicating them inside Unreal Engine. And that's how we can do it. OK, so I go through each one of the uh, present uh, variables and I set them as string fields because all of them are strings and then I create a new JSON to it, it's the root JSON essentially uh, so it's the one over here and then I'm going to start populating the rest of the fields so the name the class name and the appearance info so it doesn't matter which order I do it so I add the appearance info first so there's my uh, appearance info and this is an object field so it's not a string it's not a number uh, it is a nested object, so that's what we do. Uh, so JSON object, uh, appearance info, uh, and there it is there. So now I can just set the string field for the name and the class name, and I'm done. So I can just re return my create character request as JSON. Okay, so uh, there it is over here. So how do I get my character name and, and class? So you saw me populate the uh, character appearance structure earlier, so this is just Every time you make any modification, we 
uh, reevaluate the character appearance struct. Um, and the classes are available from the classes objects and the classes index. So we just get the tag value from those. We pass that into the class and we have a text box. So this text box over here for the character name, we just take the raw value from there and we pass it into here. So that's how we get all of the data for this uh, request. Uh, so then you, you, you just set that uh, as an object. So this uh, request over here. So you, you set the object to that request and you link it and then you apply the URL. So you just need to make sure that this URL matches this one over here. So relatively trivial, uh, copy and paste it in. And uh, once you've got the output, so um, this will await until uh, it's completed before uh, going into here. Um, what I do is I just basically uh, convert that JSON to string and I'm just going to put it into the uh, debugger just for extra visibility. And I'm also um, uh, applying it as a local variable so I can do some additional processing to it. So uh, I've created another custom event to validate the response. And it's just so that this function doesn't get too messy and too long, right? Um, and to be honest, I will very likely change the functionality here as well. Uh, because uh, this is a very trivial method uh, that I'm using here. Like it can be a lot better. Uh, basically, when uh, I create um, a character twice, for example, I'm going to be sending an error and the error, uh, the error will always include a message field. So basically, anytime I see message part of my JSON response, that basically means that I have an error, right? So that's kind of what I'm utilizing here. I get my response. I get the string field and I check, does my uh, message have any content? Because by default, it doesn't give me a null. It will just give me an empty string. So um, if, if there is some value in the message, that means something went wrong and I want to be creating a, an error widget. So I'm going to be showing that shortly. But basically, I do a branch. If uh, the message has some content, I'm going to render a um, error widget. And I'm going to disable uh, this widget just so that you can't, for example, close off the create character widget while interacting with the error, right? Uh, so I create it and add the error message to the viewport. I also set the self as the parent to the um, error widget, uh, just so that the error widget can then enable this widget back again. So we're going to look at the um, how this works very shortly. But basically, if there is no error, uh, we just handle close. We're going to close off this one and load back the character selection screen, which is going to reload all of the characters and make them available for the uh, user to choose again. So relatively simple. And to be honest, this is uh, the majority of the work. So let's have a look at uh, the error widget. So uh, I put it under common so that we can use it basically within different screens uh, or with, between these two screens. I only actually use it in the create character widget right now, but it has the potential to be used elsewhere. So it's a relatively simple widget, basically uh, a widget which expects you to add a uh, error message. So uh, the design can be as you like. This is my design. It basically has a vertical box with a title of error. Uh, it will have um, the error content. So this is where I'm going to be populating the error into. And then I also have a button OK. So let's have a look at the implementation. So the first thing to note is that I have this error message, which I make a public variable and I'm exposing it on spawn so that when you create this widget, you're able to basically attach an error message straight away. So once uh, this is constructing, you basically populate the error content uh, so uh, this uh, this text field over here with the error message string that you uh, get inserted at the spawn. Okay, uh, so you just set it as text. Uh, fairly simple in that regard. And then also when you acknowledge the error, you want to enable the parent, which uh, just earlier we disabled when we spawn this thing. Right, set enabled false here, and now uh, here you uh, set enabled true. Right, so you enable the parent again, and then you remove this widget from parent. So relatively simple, just to make sure that the user acknowledged the error. Okay, and um, I, I believe that's actually it. 
So what we now have is basically a widget. So what we looked at is uh, this widget over here to create characters. So um, we're able to basically select all of the options, which we were able to do from the previous video. We're able to populate the name. And when we click create, uh, we send a request. So let's make this a female, for example. Uh, we send a request to our server to create this character. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be uh, consuming that data to then um, basically render them on the character selection screen so that we're basically ready to start going into the game using these characters. Okay. I just realized I forgot to demonstrate the error message working as well. So I'm just going to quickly show that happening right now. So for example, if I create a character with uh, this name, uh, so there it is over there. Uh, if I try and create a, a character again with the same name, I'm going to get myself the error message. So I just wanted to make sure that we can see the error message happening. So you can see I'm not able to interact with uh, the other widget. You can see it's disabled. Uh, the buttons are disabled. You can see the error message popping up. And I'm going to have to acknowledge that before going back to the screen. So then I'll be able to uh, basically just make any modification and there's my character again. Yep. So just wanted to show that again and uh, yeah, good luck and see you next time. Thanks.